Hello everybody, Yom Tov, and welcome to today's Real Crime Stories. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why I've particularly chosen this crime. I think it was because I don't understand women who kill children. Um, particularly babies. I think all child killings are wrong. You know, children are defenceless and they look to us, their parents, to look after them, to keep them safe from harm, not to kill them. But that's what this woman did. And the criminal that I'm talking about today is Mary Beth Tenning, who was convicted of the murder of her baby daughter, Tammy Lynn. She'd also confessed to killing um, two of her other children, Timothy and Nathan, although apparently she later retracted that statement, but as it the story will unfold, you'll see that it is more or less highly likely that she did kill those children as well as Tammy Lynn. Tammy Lynn was the one that she openly admitted to kill her. But I want to give you some background, as I always do, with these stories. Um... Tammy Beth Tenning was born Tammy Beth Rowe um, in a place in New York called Dwaynesburg in 1942. Um, went to you know went to school. Didn't go on really to do very much educationally. Had low paying jobs like waitressing. Um, that that sort of thing. Although, don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with waitressing. But, you know, it, it's not some of the best paying jobs in the world. And um, as a total aside to this case, I do think it's very, very important to tip your waitress, your waiter, whoever has served you when you're having a meal. Because a lot of those tips are going to keep them afloat and make it worthwhile them doing what they're doing because the job is so well paid so low paid so getting tips and what have you um helps make a huge difference to their their wages at the end of the week so please don't forget to ever tip your waiter or your waitress you know whenever you've you know as long as you've had decent service, half decent service, and if you've had exceptional service, then tip them accordingly. That's nothing much to do with this here. She was set up on a blind date in 1963 to meet her future husband, um, Joseph Tennant. He was apparently very laid back, mild mannered, happy go lucky kind of guy. They got married in 1965. Um, in 1967, they had their first child called Barbara. And then in 1970, they went on to have their second child, who was Joe Jr., Joseph Jr. So, anyway, I do, because there's so many facts and what have you in this case, I do have to keep going back to this because I haven't managed to memorise all of it. Um, now, um, oh, I forgot to mention that when she did graduate from high school in 1961, she did manage to secure a job as a nursing assistant, which is another wonderful job to have. Um, right. Now, one of the first... Um, problems that we saw 
Um, and it's it's strange because in this there's jumping up and down of um, the date stamps. I can't find anything that does things in absolute chronological order. But they had a third child called Jennifer. She was born in 1971 and she only lived for eight days. Um, she hadn't even left the hospital with Jennifer and Jennifer died. Um, and once, once everything had been played out, the investigators in charge of this case actually thought, well, they didn't believe that Mary Beth had anything to do with what happened to Jennifer because she was in hospital with her the whole time. So, um, they don't think she had a role to play in Jennifer's death. Now, 17 days after Jennifer's death, Mary Beth takes Joseph Jr. to the hospital and he was um, found to be dead, apparently from um, a cardiac arrest. Um, so that's what was written on his death certificate. And then a few weeks after that, Mary Beth takes Barbara, the eldest child, she's four at this point. She takes Barbara to the hospital, um, claiming that Barbara was having convulsions. Now the doctors found out that Barbara had Ray's syndrome, which is an extremely rare syndrome to have. But as they say, once the investigators and everything were involved, they didn't believe that Mary Beth had anything to do with Barbara's death either because of the diagnosis of Ray's syndrome. Um, you know, Barbara's admitted to hospital and after one day of being in a coma-like state, unfortunately, Barbara passes away. So we are now three children born, three children have died. So, in 1973, Mary Beth goes on to give birth to a boy called Timothy. Um, within a few weeks of his birth, he's brought into the hospital by Mary Beth, dead. And she claims that she found him dead in his crib. So, he was assigned to have had um, SIDS, that sudden infant death syndrome, cot death. So that was his diagnosis. Um, in 1975, she goes on to give birth to their fifth child, Nathan. Now, just want to back up a little bit. In 1974, her husband Joseph was admitted to the hospital um, with a severe case of barbiturate poisoning. And that could very well have cost him his life. Mary Beth had taken pills from a friend's house. Um, a friend's daughter had epilepsy. And it was, she took some of these pills that were, had been prescribed for the friend's daughter. And she put the pills in um, Joseph's, Joseph's grape juice. Um, the police were called, but Joseph refused to press, press charges against his wife. So she got away with that. Um, I have no explanation as to why she did that to her husband. Apparently, they were supposed to be going through some marital problems. And things weren't going very well for them in the marriage. But... You know, let's face it, all of us who have been married or in a long-term relationship with somebody or any kind of relationship, has every one of them has its ups and downs. You don't automatically think, I'm going to steal some pills from a friend and feed them to my partner. You know, um, it's you just don't do that. But she did it. But her husband 
no, he wouldn't press charges. So she got away with that. So anyway, we've got the year later, the fifth child, Nathan. He's born in 1975. And he apparently dies while he's in the car with Mary Beth while they were out shopping. Um, she said when she took him to the hospital, she noticed he'd stop breathing when he was sitting in the front seat, passenger seat beside her in the car. So that was, um, Nathan is now dead. So that's child number five. Now, in 1978, um, the Tennings decide to go ahead with an adoption of uh, a little black boy. His name is Michael. Um, and while they were going through the adoption process with Michael, Mary Beth finds that she's pregnant again. Um, and this time, it's... Um, with a daughter called Mary Frances. But instead of stopping the adoption, because now she's pregnant with another child, they decide to go ahead, adopt Michael, and then she goes on to have Mary Frances. Now, after um, about a year of having Mary Frances, Mary Beth takes to the hospital and she says Mary um, Mary Frances has had a seizure. So the staff actually were able to save Mary Beth. Um, they revived her and um, she was allowed to go home. But um, anyway, a month later, Mary Beth returned with Mary Frances saying she's had another seizure and the staff were able to revive her again but this time poor Mary Frances suffered from um, irreversible brain damage and after a day of being in the hospital the staff decide to take Mary Frances off life support and she died so now we've lost Mary Frances so we're now in I believe it's 1979 and they have another child called Jonathan um, I believe he was born I think it was the November the October and the November of 1979. Well, by March of 1980, Jonathan um, passed away as well. He was taken into the hospital, um, dead on arrival. They tried to revive him, they put him on life support, but it turned out that he too ended up being too too far gone to save so they took him off life support as well so now there's <coughs> excuse me there's Jonathan has now joined his brothers and sisters um now we're now back to Michael Michael's now two and a half he was taken to the hospital um because according to Mary Beth he'd fallen unconscious and he passed away in 1981. And up to this point, the doctors have been thinking, it must be something genetic in the family for all of the children to have died. And didn't suspect Mary Beth at all. They honestly thought that it was something genetic. But now that Michael has died, he was adopted. It can't be anything genetic, can it? So now, the doctors are starting to think, what's going on here? 
So, anyway, now Michael has gone. And then in 1985, Mary Beth gives birth to her final child called Tammy Lynn. And poor Tammy Lynn died from asphyxiation. And the day that she died, um, and I'm sorry, I can't pronounce this. It's Shekta, Shekin Teddy, Shekin, Shekin Teddy, Teddy, um, social services and the police department visited um, Mary Beth and Joseph in the home after, as I say, after Tammy Lynn had died. And, you know, it was a case of, we need to investigate this because there's definitely something going on. So they, they decided to do autopsies on six of the Tenning's children. But when they examined the bodies, none of them showed signs of any abuse. Um, anyway, Mary Beth and Joseph were taken to the police department and questioned about the death of Tammy Lynn. And it was during that interrogation that Mary Beth Tenning said, I killed Tammy Lynn. I did it. She wouldn't stop crying. So I smothered her with a pillow. And she also then confessed to the murders of Nathan and Timothy, as well as Tammy Lynn. But she later retracted that she'd murdered Nathan and um, Timothy. But, you know, it's, it's a bit late once going after the horse, once the the doors been bolted once the horse is away she's already admitted to Nathan and Timothy you know she can't really you know apparently she'd done it under duress or something like that but I don't think it was that at all I believe that she went at my personal opinion is that she admitted to Nathan and Timothy as well as Tammy Lynn and then probably thought to herself that she would get less time if she just admitted to Tammy Lynn, because she knew, she must have known, that she was going to go to prison for the death of Tammy Lynn. So, anyway, unfortunately, she actually wasn't prosecuted for the deaths of our other children. Now, Barbara had Ray syndrome. There was nothing that anybody could have done about that. I personally don't believe that she was involved in Barbara's death. I don't believe that she was involved in Jennifer's death because Jennifer was a newborn and she'd never been out of the hospital. She was there the whole time. Now, she was found to have died from um, a form of meningitis and lesions on the brain. There is a part of me that has this nagging doubt could that have been brought on by shaken baby syndrome. But then again, we just don't know. So we've got to take the, the word of the hospital that Jennifer died of the problems with her brain. But that still leaves seven children. Um, but the police only charged Mary Beth Tinning with one murder, and that was of Tammy Lynn. Um, the trial lasted six weeks. Um, the jury was out for 23 hours over a three day period. And when they came back, um, they found Mary Beth Tenning guilty of the murder of Tammy Lynn 
but she got murder in the second degree. Um, she got a sentence of 20 years to life, but it, what the parole wasn't mentioned. It was just, you've now got 20 years to life. Now, as it was, she ended up spending 31 years in prison. She had six parole hearings. Um, the first five were all denied because the uh, panel, all of them, found that she wasn't showing any signs of sincere remorse, that any remorse she was showing was seemed to be purely superficial. It was like she was telling them what she thought they wanted to hear, which is not really the right way to go about things if you want to secure... Um, your release from prison. So, um, apparently, Mary Beth said that she murdered Tammy Lynn because she didn't want her to go the same way as all her other siblings. Now, you see, I don't understand what that means. She has already admitted to killing Tammy Lynn because she was crying and fussing and she wouldn't stop crying. So she put a pillow over her face and held it there until the baby died. Now I'm finding this very hard. Because I just, I can't, I can't imagine that. Um... But then she says that she murdered her because she didn't want her to end up like her siblings. What does that say to you? Because doesn't that... I, I'm not even quite sure if I'm trying to get my head around it the right way. I mean, does she mean that she doesn't, she wanted to kill her in one way that the others hadn't been killed in? Did she, did she not want her to suffer? Did the others suffer? Is that what she meant? I mean, who knows? Um... I, I, I just can't get my head around this woman. Well, anyway, on her seventh attempt going before the parole board, this time she was granted parole. She was released from prison in August of 2018. Um, she went back to the Marisol home. Her husband was waiting to pick her up from prison. Um, she's now 77, I believe, 78. Um, so her, her husband's going to be at the same age or 80, I would imagine. He's taken her back into the marital home. She has to live by a curfew. Um, she's got to report... Uh, for um, meetings with, I would imagine, parole officers and probation officers and things like that for the rest of our life. Um, that's one of the conditions of a parole. Um, if she breaks a curfew, I would imagine, they'll just march her straight back in there. Um, personally... I wouldn't have let her out of prison. I would have kept denying her. Because I don't see why she should be allowed out to lead a normal life with home comforts, enjoying her husband's company while all of her children, including her adopted child, are dead. 
Now, I blame her for at least six of those deaths. I do not understand why the police didn't charge her in the case of the other children. I just do not understand why they only charged her over Tammy Lynn. But that's the judicial system. You know, the law is supposed to be there to, for, to protect us. But sometimes the law is an ass. And I don't think we'll ever understand it. And that's just how it is. And this woman, like I said, is living in New York. Um, and I mean, she's a mousy looking thing. She's only about five foot four. You know, silver grey hair. Um, I don't know whether it's pulled back or just in a ponytail or just very short. I don't know. It, in our latest prison photograph, it looks as if her hair's been pulled tight back in a ponytail or something. Um, but there hasn't been a squeak out of her since um, she was released from prison. And, like I said, that's the story of Mary... So I'll just keep an eye on the time there. That's the story of Mary Beth Tenner. Um... It's only because I've remembered that um, my son had to write a paper, an assignment for college when he was there and he chose to write a paper on this woman. It's all coming back to me now. Um, yeah, he wrote a paper on this woman and... Um, I think he got the highest mark in the class. Clever boy, my boy. Um, so, but I've never seen a picture of her before. Um, I don't know what she looked like. I, I took a long, hard look at her and I just thought, I mean, this must be, I don't know. She said she wanted sympathy for losing all of her children. But this has got to be a heck of a way to go around getting sympathy. Um, and whether or not maybe she had Munchausen's, we don't know. Must have been a rare form of Munchausen's where, I mean, normally they just make the children ill, don't they? Which is bad enough. Poor children have to suffer. You know, like Gypsy Rose Blanchard. I know that case very well. Um, but to kill little babies, no. I would never have let her out of prison. But that's just my personal opinion. And Mary Beth Tenning is your real crime story this week. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments. Let me know how, if you'd been on the jury, what would you have you suggested for her? And, you know, could you have lived beside her as a next door neighbour? I don't think I could have done. And I wouldn't be the one that was moving. But I couldn't have lived beside her. I don't think I could have looked at her. I can't, I do not understand child killers. I really don't understand them. Um, but, anyway, that was your case for this week. Please let me know if there's um, someone that you would like me to look into for next week's true crime. If not, I will um, talk about somebody else. 
Um, I come across a few this week that I wanted to go into. Um, one case just completely overwhelmed me, I'm afraid. And I'm going to have to try and get my head around it before I even think about talking to you about it on, on camera. Um, but anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed um, today's video. And please let me know what you think about it in the comments. Um, I want to thank you very, very much for being here. And thank you very much for listening to me. Um, I do love you all. I'm sorry, I'm feeling a bit weird at the moment. This heat is driving me nuts. Absolutely nuts. It's really hard trying to stay cool at the moment. So I will see you again very, very soon. Your next sighting of me will be for your spooky sessions. So until then, I will wish you a very happy time wherever you happen to be during your day, morning, night, evening, afternoon. And I will blow you a kiss. Just for you. And I will say bye-bye for now. And take care of yourselves. Take care. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.